the applications in the cinema industry fall into three domains. Production, display, and distribution, all of which I will touch on today. The digitalization of film production is for the most part complete. While most motion pictures are still shot on 35 millimeter film, for legacy reasons, um, many are shot on high definition video and leading filmmakers such as George Lucas and Michael Mann have embraced shooting movies in high definition video and I believe other directors will soon follow. Clearly lower budget films are shot on high definition which is to say in a digital format and that has become the norm for such works. Editing is nearly all electronic even for movies originally shot on film. The Moviola has given way largely to editing on computers, running Avid or Final Pro Cut. Special effects are nearly all electronic since taking risk in the computer is safer, cheaper, faster, and sometimes the only way to accomplish a particular effect. Much of this change is driven by cost considerations rather than by the needs of filmmakers. In today's motion picture industry, for example, the complexity of a special effect is determined by nothing more than the time it takes to render that effect on a server farm at George Lucas's Industrial Light and Magic Company. Thirty minutes of computer rendering per final frame of film is the economic sweet spot for effects, meaning 12 server hours of computer time per second of movie, a technical standard that has remained the same since Terminator 2 in the early 1990s. Need an effect twice as complex or for half the cost? Just wait 18 months for Moore's Law to make it possible. And the impact of digital production has been nothing but positive, allowing lower budget television series to have the look of higher budget features and older model movie stars to occasionally, with a little help, regain their youthful looks. Digital production techniques may not have made, the mov have, may not have made movie makers of all of us, but they have brought movie making within the reach of more people resulting in more and better and on occasionally worse films. Just as the motion picture industry has eagerly embraced digital production, it is gingerly toying with digital display. By this I mean the true digital cinema where there be, may be no film involved at all with the theater going this theater goers still paying his ten dollars to watch a show presented by a digital projector. True digital cinema has been a long time in coming. Sony was planning 15 years ago how to distribute its films by satellite to servers at the multiplex where they would have been shown on Sony digital projectors. The Sony plan would have simultaneously foiled piracy of new releases while eliminating the very considerable cost of film prints. Deciding how many film prints to make for a feature is a voodoo art in Hollywood because each 35 millimeter print costs about two thousand dollars and that cost is incurred before a single moviegoer buys a ticket. That is to say before the film distributor knows whether the film is a hit. A film planned for wide release may require as many as 3,000 prints at a cost of six million dollars or more. But what if the show flops? Two weeks later, half of those prints may be useless, not even worth storing. A month after release, if the film is not a commercial success, most of those 3,000 prints are useless and have to be discarded. Digital projectors are supposed to change this, eliminating both physical film prints and allowing the distributor to both save money and to be able to more easily fulfill demand in the case of an unexpected hit. 
while also being able to expedite the global distribution of movies. That's the whole problem with digital projection. With the exception of an occasional sleeper hit, nearly all of the savings is for the distributor, while nearly all of the cost is for the theater owner. Theater projectors are typically amortized over a 10-year life, making the exhibitor unlikely to break that cycle to upgrade early. And while film projectors have been in use for more than a century and are, no, and are a known commodity, how long can a digital projector be expected to last in use? Nobody really knows. Thus, absent a middleman who is willing to finance the conversion of a whole theater chain to digital projectors and assume the risk that is inherent in any new technology, adoption of digital projectors will be slow. Fifteen years later, Sony is still waiting for the scale effects, increased reliability, and lower labor requirements of digital cinema. And while the eventual conversion of the motion picture industry to digital projection is inevitable,